Happy Sunday, everyone. Hope one out there is enjoying your weekend. We've got a lot to break down over the next seven days, and it's going to provide a warm-up that's on the way. Plus, we had two tropical systems that did, in fact, form, and what else may be coming for hurricane season. So let's start off with the North American view and really break it down for you. We're coming off a cool down. Many areas across the lower 48 experienced some fall light conditions over the last several days. So it's definitely a nice reprieve from the warmer air that we have been seeing. But unfortunately, that is coming back. We've got the southwest winds coming back. Whenever that happens, that's going to pull in that warmer air. And you're going to be starting to feel that warmer air within, in terms of 10, 15, almost 20 degrees above average. But we had a pretty potent upper level low that formed around the Four Corners regions. That brought, in fact, record rainfall yesterday in and around the Roswell, New Mexico area. They do, in fact, have some severe storms even later on this afternoon and brought snow to some of the higher elevations and around the, the Telluride area. So yeah, it did have some, definitely some colder air loft associated with it, but we've got the warm up on the way. If we expand the view and take a look at the satellite picture, you can see what we're talking about. There is that upper level low right around that four corners region, still kind of spinning, still producing the cooler air, at least in the mountain regions. And then at the surface down there into eastern Colorado and into New Mexico, say far western panhandle of Texas and western Oklahoma, there are going to be experiencing some showers and thunderstorms and some of those could turn severe as well if we take you out in the tropics we did in fact have two areas that we were watching down there into the western caribbean and this also a conglomerate of thunderstorms that kind of exploded so first we had nadine that formed whale down here into the western caribbean in fact it made landfall in and around the belize region and this is what's left over as it's trying to cross back over into the pacific and if it can remain intact and keep the name it will in fact keep the name nadine as it continues to track out into the open waters of the pacific and there we had oscar that formed and just kind of blew up in the national hurricane center took this thing down to like a 10 percent probability and the next thing you knew it was a tropical system and in fact it blew up to a hurricane an 85 mile per hour hurricane made landfall and it was more or less a microcane because the national, you know, the you know, hurricane hunters went inside of it. They found a three mile eye and they only found a five mile radius of hurricane winds. It was a very potent, small, compact storm. And that was one of the reasons why it was just able to spin up so quick, so fast. But it literally went from nothing to an 85 mile per hour hurricane very quickly. But now it's continued that westward track in around the Turks and Caicos area, the eastern Bahamas regions. And in fact, it should start to turn further north and eventually turn its well out to sea. But we also already have another flare up of activity well down south into and around the Costa Rica, Costa Rica region. That's just another area we're going to have to watch over the next five to seven days because this is typically the time of year the fit more favored area down there into the western caribbean so we still have about five more weeks of hurricane season so it's not out of the question we could still get you know even a couple of name more storms so here's the track i mean that was we were watching this wave that came off of africa and it's very unusual this time of year for this wave to kind of just hold together which it did it was small and it it could it survive the track all the way just north of dominican republic and that's when it blew up into that hurricane and there's the formation of nadine down there into the belize region you can see it here just an upper level low so if it does in fact stay intact it will keep the name nadine as it travels out up into the open waters of the pacific but overall what may be coming is that little other system down there into the far outskirts of the western caribbean so right now the some of the european ensembles do in fact have that flare up of thunderstorms that i showed you maybe starting to come to start to come something tropical in about five to seven days right now about 40 to possibly 50 percent of even that becoming possibly our next tropical depression but right now there's the upper level low that's going to be producing more showers and thunderstorms and severe storms 
in and around the New Mexico region. So yes, unfortunately, that does include Roswell again for those strong to severe thorn. It does have some uh, colder air aloft, so we, we do in fact have a hail threat as well, and even a, a small tornado risk. So yeah, can't let your guard down with these with these storms are going to bubble up in the heat of the afternoon, say like after five o'clock this afternoon, definitely be on high alert within that region because it could turn nasty again into the evening time frame. But man, the last 30 days, this is the big picture. So obviously we've had two big hurricanes with Helene and Milton down there into the Southeast region. And that was pretty much it. I mean, most they took out a lot of water out of the atmosphere helene had 42 trillion gallons of water milton had 15 so that's 57 trillion just an enormous amount of water taken out of the atmosphere and dumping it over that region which left most of the rest of the country kind of high and dry see it's been very dry over the last 30 days this is the last 30 day precipitation anomaly totals and a good part of the country is kind of begging for rain especially the middle of the car part of the country where they've been weeks without any rain whatsoever and unfortunately i really don't have any much more to speak of in the week ahead so for the next two days here's what we're looking at we have that stalled frontal boundary that's keeping uh oscar from from lifting and, and and impacting actually florida that's the reason why it's actually going to be turning north and eventually out to sea because it's going to run into that frontal boundary and kind of do a, a right hand turn pretty quickly but you're still getting some kind of sea breeze action in and around the florida region so you are expecting some more just isolated bubble up activity in the heat of the afternoon nothing unusual what you typically see this time of year there's the upper level low that uh you know right now over the four corners regions that's going to spawn some more showers and thunderstorms across eastern new mexico down there in colorado as well so that's going to start bleeding over into western oklahoma getting into kansas and eventually end up into the nebraska region as we head into monday we are going to be looking at more rain showers coming back into play with the trough coming into the pacific northwest they're about to enter their rainy season so that's going to be uh, rain coming back in the picture for them especially along the coastal regions into Washington and Oregon and parts of Northern California but overall you can see the big picture on the jet stream what we're looking at it it, it almost looks like more of a summertime pattern because we've got more of a zonal flow with a jet stream well to the north basically right there the you know, northern border of the United States all the way to Canada that's the jet stream and further south is just kind of dominating with that ridge of high pressure basically means sinking air right you get a lot of sinking air with high pressure becomes almost next to impossible to screen you know ring out any precipitation in that atmosphere so it keeps any storm track just kind of well to the north besides this little upper level low that would took place you know that going with now but that's going to subside as we head into tomorrow and going into especially tuesday and by wednesday <laughs> we're going to be looking at plenty of warm air in fact even some record breaking temperatures a good swath across a good part of the country you're looking at 10 15 almost upwards to 20 degrees above average i'm gonna know pittsburgh is gonna hit 81 degrees there on tuesday that's gonna be plenty warm for them all the way up into Maine and New England. So much of the lower 48 is going to experience well above average temperatures by the time we head into that Wednesday time frame. And some of those, in fact, could be some record breaking temperatures. Some areas bound down there in Texas again in Oklahoma with under those dry conditions, dry soil heats up pretty quickly. And with the southwest wind, that doesn't take much to go back into the 90s and 90s for this time of year are in fact record breaking or at least close to record breaking so right now they're you know they're talking 91 degrees possibly in the dallas Fort Worth area would tie a record so yeah definitely plenty warm air but you can see where the cooler air is right right where that more of the polar jet is well to the northern tier where you could drop into the 40s for highs in places of northern minnesota and northern wisconsin and that's when the kind of the 540 line pretty much dips down to the great lakes and drags down some of that cooler air far to the north but overall there's really not much precipitation to work with that atmosphere yes it's going to ring out some of it across 
northern you know southern branches of canada and eventually this is going to head into areas of new england but again high pressure here high pressure here pretty much dominates the region and leaves much of the country high and dry there's the low pressure with which we'd be oscar by then still but you know still oscar and that's going to be finally going to be lifting out into the open waters as it hits that front that stalled out there into the gulf of mexico and so by the time we head into that thursday time frame there's that trough that's going to be coming in and to cross New England. Again, it's not going to ring out too much precipitation with this, so really don't expect much. But it's going to bring a briefly cooler shot of air for portions of the northeast and parts of the southeast as well. While much of the rest of the country continues to remain on the above average side, even going into Thursday, well, there's that little briefly cooler shot of air, a couple of degrees, five degrees below average. But other than that, across the western regions, another warm up <laughs> continues to unfold. And if we look at the big picture on Friday, I mean, what stands out is this little feature right here, right? I mean, this still could be the remnants of Nadine just kind of sitting down that's going to be crossing over right now into Central America, back out to the Pacific. And most guidance has this continued to remain a fairly decent storm. So if it does, in fact, keep the, at least the, the semblance of Nadine, it will keep that name and still be out in the Pacific. And we'll still be talking about it by the time we get into the weekend. But unfortunately, it will be in the Pacific and likely not going to be affecting anybody. But even by Friday, you're still going to be dealing with that ridge of high pressure that's still going to be dominating a good part of the lower 48 but we do in fact have a new reinforcing trough that's going to be diving in across the pacific northwest that's going to bring a reinforcing shot of cooler air for them by the time we get into that last weekend of october you know heading towards your halloween but overall it's still dry folks i mean yes nothing unusual for rain showers to come back in the picture for the pacific northwest and the rainy season right now as they're going into across those regions and then as we extend to, into sunday by the time we head into next sunday we're still looking at you know pretty good pretty much much of the country under dry conditions so if we break it down over the next seven days you've got that cooler shot of air that comes in across the upper great lakes across portions of new england and down there into the southeast so more or less overall if you're average it out just about average conditions for the southeast regions and there's the upper upper level low that kind of sticks out with that colder air aloft but other than that these deeper darker reds highlighted across the middle of the country that's going to be your warm air and that's where you're begging for rain across the middle part of the country just hasn't seen much of anything and what's to come over the next seven days looks like this right you've got some rain showers back in the picture for that pacific northwest region you got the upper level low action but other than that the stalled fronts well south down there in cuba keeps most of the country high and dry you got the high and dry conditions over the the southeastern regions and much of arkansas and oklahoma and unfortunately texas again continues to remain dry with the storm track well to the north across the northern border of the lower 48 into canada there so that's the breakdown over the next seven days folks so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update why i protect you before and after the storm